Module 13, More Forms. In this module, we hope you will develop the skills to create far more complex forms that are still easy for an end user to use. So consider this problem. When a user clicks a button, we want them to be able to add a new flight, specifying where the flight's from and where the flight's going to, as well as a cost and whether or not the flight was first class. That data will then automatically be introduced to the spreadsheet below the previous entry, which in this case would be the entry in row 9, so the next entry will be made in row 10. We're going to start with some definitions. So we have header row, we have a list of continents, of which these are the Asian countries, these are the Australasian countries, we have European and American. We can have a from call, a to call, cost call, and class call. If that looks like a lot of definitions, it will help us immensely when we create our form. So first we'll add some code for our button. So very simply, we're going to load a form which we haven't created yet, called form flights. We're then going to show form flights. Now we need to create our form. So we create a user form. We'll bring up the properties window so we can see what we're doing. We're going to name the form form flights. We can give it a caption flight information, which as you can see will now appear at the top of the form. And we'll add labels for where we're going from and where we're going to. Now the easiest way for a user to select a country from a list is if they have a drop down which enables them first to select what continent the country is in and then to select the country itself. So we have what is known as a combo box, which is actually a drop-down. So there'll be one drop-down they select the continent they leave from. There'll be another drop-down from which they select the country they're leaving. And the same will be the case for going to. The crucial thing is how we supply a list of continents to our drop-down. Now we can use this using the property low source. And very simply, you have to say row source equals the name of the range, which if you remember from our definitions, we called continents, that contains the information you want. So now we've said it equals continents. If we click on the drop down arrow, we get an option of selecting the continent Asia. Now that's not our full list of four continents. That's because if you're making a drop down box, all the drop down entries have to be in a list within your Excel spreadsheet when specified as a range. We need to create a downward list of continents. We then need to go to the name manager, define our name for continents as this range. Now if you think this looks a bit ugly compared to our original sheet, we can now hide that column of data. So now we've defined continents as a downward list, we can click on the drop down arrow and we can see we can choose our continent. Now we don't want to let users select any other value other than those in the list. If you look down the list of properties for the box, you can see we have match required equal to false. Since we want to match an entry to the list, we should say match required equals true. We should repeat those changes for our other box, so row source equals continents. We want to add a cost box, which we can do as before, just using a label and a text box. And then we want some way of indicating whether the flight was first or second class. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either have a check box, which if we paste it into place, you can see is very simply a tick box with a message by the side, so in this case we could say first class question mark. When the box is checked, we can assume the person is travelling first class. Alternatively, there are these things called option buttons. If you have two option buttons, both with names, then very simply, if one option button is selected, the other can't be. We can demonstrate this by opening the form up. Here is our form. We can tick first class and we can untick first class. However, if we have first class selected with an option button and we select regular class, first class ceases to be selected. 
In this case, it would appear simpler just to have a checkbox for first class, so we will delete the option buttons. Note you can select multiple items with the mouse just by dragging an area across all of them. And we can hit delete. Then we want two buttons saying OK and cancel. We can then adjust the sides of our form. And lo and behold, we now have a form and all we need to do is to write the code. To facilitate writing the code, we should give all the components of the form sensible names. So we can have CBO meaning a combo box, from cont, meaning the continent you're from, and we can have CBO from count, indicating the country something's from, CBO to cont, and CBO to count. Text cost, check first, and command cancel. You may notice how Excel coding becomes as much about the definitions you make as the actual code and details that you write. There is one last element, form design. On our form at present, we can use the tab button on the keyboard to navigate from one box to the next. However, it doesn't go in the order that would be logical. Instead, it goes across the top, down, across, down, and then across again, then OK, cancel. Ideally, we would want the form to fill in here, 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 and here in that order. This side of things is governed by a cell's tab index. Now very simply, the cell with the lowest tab index is treated first, the next lowest is next, so the tab index of your first cell should be 1, of your second cell should be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the bottom. If somebody hits cancel on the form, the code should just say to hide the form. So me.hide. At this stage, we would normally write the code that applies if somebody presses OK. However, at the moment, the user cannot complete the form because there are no options for them once they've selected their continent. If we want to give people a list of countries based on the continent they select, then we need to write code that comes into effect when a selection is made in the first drop down list. So we can view code as for a command button. As you can see, the title indicates that when CBO from the cont, that's our drop down list, is changed, then this code will run. Effectively, we want to be able to change from count. And if you remember, the row source of from cont is what defines the list the user sees. So for our country drop down, we want to change a row source and make it equal to the relevant country list. So if Asia has been selected, the relevant country list is equals Asian. Note the parenthesis. That's because we're trying to simulate somebody typing equals Asian in this box. Of course, that's only the case if the selection in from cont equals Asia. Else the list could say Australian. I've taken the liberty of completing the list. Of course, we want very similar changes to be made once somebody makes a selection from the to cont box. So instead of rewriting all the code, we can copy and paste the entire subroutine and then do a find and replace for from with to. It's worth testing this feature before going any further. So we add new flight and say from Asia, and then we have the option of leaving China or Japan. If we say from Europe, we can now leave France, Germany or the UK. But you notice that Japan has remained in place. Really, the country should be blank at the point somebody has selected a new continent. By now, you should be confident that you know the code to do that. Every time from cont changes, we want to make the country equal to blank. And we should mirror that code when somebody changes the continent they're going to. So now the user is capable of completing the form, we need to write the code when somebody clicks OK. First and foremost, we need to check that all boxes have been completed. So if me.textcost is blank, or me.cbo from count is blank, or me.cbo to count is blank, 
then there should be a message box saying all fields should be completed. Note also that the cost has to be a number. So if VBA is numeric, me.text cost equals false. That's to say if the entry in the text box isn't numeric, then an alternative message box comes up saying cost must be numeric. We could even have gone further and insisted that the number in the text box was greater than zero as the cost cannot be negative. But if those conditions are met, then we want to enter the data from the form into our spreadsheet. So we defined header row beforehand. We also defined our various columns. Note that as we're writing the code within form flights, we will need to explicitly reference the sheet which the columns and rows are in. So this is sheet calc. Next, we need to find the first blank row below the header. So we're going to write a simple loop which works out when the from column is blank below the header. The first row we want to test has to be header row plus one. Having identified the first blank row, very simply, sheet calc, remember we have to refer to the sheet again, cells row num from col equals me.cbo, and if you can't remember the names, this drop down list will give you some guidance. So that's from count. To col is identical, except with two substituted for four. Cost col is equal to the text box. In terms of whether something is first class or not, we need a way of referring to whether a checkbox has been checked or not. So we can say if me.check, its name was first, is true, then it's been checked. If we said false, that would mean if it had not been checked. Or if we leave it blank, the default assumed is true. So if the box has been checked, then sheet calc dot cells row num class call equals yes, else it equals no. And then at the very end, we need to say hide the form now, your job's done. So without further ado, let's add a new flight. Let's go from Europe, from the UK to North America. And we see our box here isn't working. That means going back to our code. And you can see that when North America is selected, we've written this extra dot row source, which is unnecessary and inconsistent with the code above. You can also see we've written count instead of cont. So now if you've reselected North America, you can choose the USA and put in a cost of $4,000 and say that's first class. The data gets entered in the sheet fine. One thing we have neglected is that when the form opens, all of these options are already selected. Now we don't want that to be the case. So within the sheet code, we need to say form flights dot text cost is blank. The continent is blank. That's both for from and to. Note that when setting the text box, we have to say it's equal to false to say it hasn't got a value. Now we will get a blank form. Let's finish by introducing sheet protection as we have in our forms to date. So that's pretty much it. We can carry on making entries like this. And at this stage, we should be looking for enhancements to the code. Firstly, the costs which have come out do not have dollar signs. That's because we have not specified that the costs are actually values because they come from a text box. We would change that here. We also have an error message in D11. That's because we've said equals no, when really we should have just said no. If we try adding our France-China flight again, there will be no such problems this time. So I'm just going to make one more change, which is to say if I select Australia from the list, then the only country I can select is Australia itself. Therefore, it would make sense for that to be entered by default. This is easily achieved by just setting the box equal to Australia in the relevant places. So when the continent is changed to Australia, both in the from box and the to box. Now the information is filled in automatically, which saves a little bit of time and convenience.